What if instead of a recession, we want to look at an expansion? Like, what if we have consumer confidence increasing, which we know would shift the IS curve to the right, which would in turn also shift that aggregate demand curve to the right? So what if we, what if we saw that? What are we going to see? Well, we would see this IS curve coming over here somewhere to the right. We can label that IS, let's say sub B. We know that that would also shift my aggregate demand curve somewhere over here to the right. Again, we can just label that AD sub B. And we know that where the aggregate demand, aggregate supply curve cross, that's going to be our short run macroeconomic general equilibrium. So we will have output sub B. So we'll have a positive output gap. We'll see inflation start to rise. This should make sense. More consumption will push prices up. So we have a positive inflation gap as well. If we go up to the IS curve, we can now see where everything's going to line up. We will have a higher in interest rate, which makes sense, more demand for things. We should see higher interest rates because people will demand more money, all that fun stuff. So we now have this higher interest rate. Let's call this R sub B. We see point B along a stationary MP curve. Remember, MP curve is only going to shift if R bar changes, which is that monetary policy. And then here we go. We have our inflation going up. Everything checks out, right? Here we are in an expansion and everything checks out. So what type of policy response? Well, just like we did with the recession, we are going to look at three different policy responses. The first one, we're going to actually look at no policy response. So let's go no policy response. So if there's no policy responses, then this is just going to be that self-correcting, which we talked about. So this is a self-correcting mechanism. And remember, at point B here, we are going to see a positive output gap, meaning we're in an expansion, which means that we are going to have a tight labor market. So we have a tight labor market. Remember, a tight labor market means there's a lot of jobs that are open, but not a lot of people that are going to be able to fill them. So this is going to have upward pressure on wages. Upward pressure on wages. Now remember, if we have upward pressure on wages, this is going to increase my expected inflation rate, right? Because if my wages are going to start to go up and then prices are starting to go up, I'm going to start to expect even higher prices. And so if we start to expect even higher prices, this is going to shift my aggregate supply curve up back to the aggregate demand equaling to long run aggregate supply. We're going to get back to closing this output gap. What is that going to look like? Well, we can show it here. That's going to shift this short run aggregate supply curve, right? My aggregate supply curve, make this a little straighter. It's going to shift this up and we will see aggregate supply curve. Let's call this C just because it's going to line up with point C and we will see an even bigger inflation gap. So letting the economy correct for itself will get us further away from our inflation target and we know why that might be bad. However, it does automatically close the output gap without us worrying about, you know, deficits or or anything like that. How will that have an impact on the interest rate? Well, we know that there's no policy, but we're back at Y sub P. So we can plug that back into the IS curve and we know that we'll see even higher interest rates and everything matches up, right? With the MP curve, we see a higher real interest and we see this coming down and that shows my inflation C. So notice everything matches up. But what we did without any policy response, we see that there's not any change in IS going from like an ISB to ISC. There's no change in MP. The only thing that's changing when there's no policy response is this upward shift in the aggregate supply curve. This is if we see an expansion where we see this positive output gap and the economy automatically adjusts itself back to long run equilibrium.